Electricity is essentially what makes modern day life possible. If we didn't have electricity, our entire civilization would be completely unrecognizable from what it is today. Of course, something that important is bound to have an interesting history, so let's take a look at it. Lightning has fascinated human beings for as long as there have been human beings around to witness lightning. But it wasn't until the past 250 years or so that we actually had the means to study and figure out exactly what lightning is. Benjamin Franklin tied a key to a kite in 1752 and flew it into a storm proving once and for all lightning is in fact electricity. You might have heard of this experiment, it was kind of a big deal. However, the first means for creating our own power didn't come around until 1831 when a British scientist named Michael Faraday discovered that by passing a magnet through copper coils he could create electricity. This was by far one of the most important discoveries in the history of power, as it's still the method we use to create power today. Granted, the magnets are a tad bigger, but it's still the same. Of course, now that we can make electricity, there was still the problem of how do we use it. In the heyday of power, the type of power that was used was DC or direct current. This was problematic though, as it's not very easy to convert direct current to a higher or lower voltage. And since you lose power the further you transmit it, this meant that we needed a lot of short range power stations. In fact, big cities like New York or London had dozens of different power companies that were responsible for only powering a block or two. In the case of London, these power companies had no standardization at all, meaning your light bulb that works in your old house might not work your new house even though it's only three blocks down the road. This was until Nikola Tesla came up with AC or alternating current. The positive thing about AC is that it can be easily converted up to a higher current for long range transmissions and then step back down to a low current for use in the home. This started the war of the currents. Thomas Edison held various patents for DC motors and he wasn't interested in losing his market. So he started a public smear campaign against alternating current, even going as far as to publicly execute an elephant using alternating current to show just how dangerous it actually is. But this didn't deter Tesla. No. Instead, he kept marketing his idea to companies which liked the idea of building one big power plant versus dozens of smaller ones. Eventually Tesla and his alternating current won out over Edison's direct current and became the standard. Thomas Edison's company gave up their smear campaign and began producing alternating current as well to keep up with the market. It looked like direct current was dead, and it might have been, but it found a completely new market in today's world. Modern day electronics can't run off of alternating current, they need a direct source of power. This is why your phone charger has that block for a plug and why other electronics like computers have power bricks attached to their cables. These are AC to DC converters. It's also worth mentioning that batteries produce DC current, meaning that anything that runs off battery power most likely runs off of DC current, including electric cars. Well, except for one, the Tesla, which uses a converter to allow it to run off of an AC electric motor. I guess you can say some feuds never die. Well guys, that does it for a brief history of electricity. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I make new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and I would hate for you to miss out. We also have a Twitter, and it's another great way to keep up with new content, as well as suggesting new ideas for a brief history of videos. And as always, please enjoy the rest of your internet going experience. Thank you.